Today, I'm gonna to show you how to write your first Ethereum smart contract. We'll create this simple counter smart contract with the Solidity programming language. We'll do it all in your browser so you don't have to install anything on your computer. And you don't have to know anything about Ethereum, Solidity, or blockchain in order to get started. I'm gonna walk you through step by step. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and click the like button down below. And if you're serious about learning blockchain, then you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. In order to follow along with me, head on over to remix.ethereum.org to get started. So Remix is a browser-based IDE that allows you to start writing Ethereum smart contracts without having to set anything up on your development environment. You can do everything in your browser. You don't have to get anything installed. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get started by clicking Solidity. That's the programming language that we're going to use to write Ethereum smart contracts today. So click Solidity. And this is going to give you a fully-fledged development environment ready to go out of the box with Solidity. It even comes with a blockchain that's going to run in your web browser so you don't have to connect to a public blockchain and you don't have to install a blockchain on your machine at all. Although I will show you how to do that at the end of this tutorial, so stick around. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this little uh, file icon right here. This is the uh, file tree that shows you where you can actually create new Ethereum smart contracts uh, in this browser-based IDE. So there's already a file here called untitled.sol. Um, you can create a new file if you don't have one. I'm just going to do this, right? So here's where we're going to actually start writing the code for the Ethereum smart contract. So I'll start off by uh, creating the declaration of the Solidity programming language that we're going to use. Excuse me, I'm going to declare the version of uh, Solidity just like this, say Pragma, uh, Solidity, uh, version 0.5.1. All right, some people do this with a caret. Uh, but I'm actually going to lock the version of Solidity that's so that we know uh, the exact version uh, that we want to use. And sometimes this is actually a security vulnerability because people could use higher versions of Solidity that might actually have a uh, security vulnerability that you don't want your app to be exposed to. So that's just a little tidbit for you. And we can create the smart contract like this. We just say contract. It's a keyword in Solidity. And we give it a name. I'm going to call it counter. And then we follow that with some curly braces, open and close. All right, it automatically closed the curly brace for us whenever I hit uh, enter. So all the uh, Solidity source code for the smart contract is gonna go uh, inside of these curly braces. The first thing that I wanna do is create a variable uh, for this counter smart contract. I'm gonna call it uint uh, count, all right? So let me explain what this means. This is a variable uh, in Solidity and this is how we declare them. We give it the type followed by the variable name. That's because Solidity is a statically typed language. That means that we have to declare the data type uh, that's going to be stored in the variable and it can't change. So if you come from some uh, dynamically typed uh, programming language, maybe like Ruby or JavaScript or something like that, where you know this could be a string, it could be an array, it could be whatever, whatever, it can always change. That's not how it works in Solidity. You have to uh, only use uh, the same data type anytime you, you know, assign this variable a value. So in this case, it's an unsigned integer. That just means uh, that it's a number uh, that does not have a sign. So a signed integer could be negative, for example, like minus two uh, would be a signed integer with a sign in front of it. Um, this is an unsigned integer. It does not have a uh, sign in front of it. So it, uh, it's always positive. That's what an unsigned integer is. Now, there's different kinds of unsigned integers in Solidity. This could be uint256. You can see all the different possibilities here. This could be uint8, uh, right? 88, 80, <laughs> 184, 48, 248, right? And this is just referring to the number of bits uh, that the integer can contain, which is going to determine the size. So by default, they're 256. Um, you can customize this to be smaller if you want, but for now, I'm just going to use uint256, uh, and I'm going to use uint for short. So this is going to be the count inside the smart contract. Uh, and I also note that this is a state variable, excuse me. So the value of this variable is going to get written to the blockchain. Uh, so anytime we update this value, it's going to get stored on the blockchain like a database. And this is really similar to like an object relational mapper or something like that in another programming language or framework where you might be reading and writing from a database uh, and have an object that you know is responsible for updating a certain column in the database. That's how this state variable works inside of Solidity. Essentially, uh, this counts is going to get stored on the blockchain, and this is the variable that's uh, 
in charge of uh, reading and writing that value of count on the blockchain. So uh, let's create a way to uh, set this value. We're going to do it like this. Let's say function uh, increment. All right. So this is how you create a function inside Solidity. You use the function keyword followed by the uh, name of the function, and then you uh, follow it with an open and closed parentheses. If it had some arguments, we could put some arguments inside of here, but in this case, uh, we don't. And then you use uh, curly braces, open and closed, uh, and you put all the function code inside of here. All right, it works just a lot like any other programming language that has functions. You should uh, be pretty familiar with this if you come from any other language that has them, okay? So we can ascend, we can uh, change this value pretty easily, right? We could say uh, count equals uh, count plus one, right? That would uh, just increment the count or change it by one. We would just access this value and then add, you know add it back to itself. We can also do this with a shortcut. Uh, we can say count is plus equal one, just like that. So that will. Uh, change the count like this, okay? So I wanna do uh, one other thing while I'm here. Uh, that will successfully in increment the count, but I wanna show you something that Solidity smart contracts have. Uh, in addition to functions and you know these uh, data types and the variables and all that kind of stuff, it also has events, all right? So I'll show you what, what that is. So we can create an event inside the smart contract like this, event uh, increment, and uh, we will do this, say uint uh, value, all right? And I can call this event inside here just like this, say emit uh, increment, and then pass in a uh, count, all right, followed by a uh, semicolon. So all these lines in Solidity need to be followed by semicolons just like this to um, let Solidity know that you're going to a new line. Obviously, we don't have to do that with functions because the curly braces uh, are self-explanatory. Okay, so what is this event doing? Well, Solidity and Ethereum allow you to subscribe to events to smart contracts. So essentially, we can call this function and anyone on the blockchain can subscribe to this increment event and find out that the count actually went up. Okay, so basically anytime this uh, increment function happen, we can listen for it maybe inside of an app or any other service on the web or something like that that's going to listen to the blockchain and know that this function count uh, happened, right? And th it doesn't matter whether we called it or not, anyone can listen for this. And we can also find you know the history of these events uh, on the blockchain from an event stream and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. So it's pretty powerful just to add this to your functions whenever you're programming smart contracts. I do a lot of do it a lot in professional projects, uh, for, especially for histories and things like that. Okay. So um, we can also create a function to decrease the count like this, a function uh, decrement. All right. And we can, you know, say uh, count equals count minus one. Right. Or we could do the shorthand just like we did a minute ago and say count um, minus equals one, and that will also decrement the count. And we can create an event for that, just like this. Say event uh, decrement, and say uint value. And that's gonna allow anyone uh, to subscribe to this decrement value in order to, um, you know, do the same thing they did with the increment. If anyone wants to find out that this value uh, went less, they can subscribe to this event. It doesn't matter whether they called the function or not. Okay, so we can emit a decrement. All right, and then pass in the count. All right, perfect. So now we want to be able to uh, call these functions on the smart contract from our IDE. And there's a problem. Currently, these functions can only be called uh, inside the smart contract because they don't have any visibility set to them. So what do I mean by that? Well, we can't call this function from outside the smart contract because it doesn't have a visibility of public, right? And we can do that just like this. 
All right. So these visibilities are things we can add to functions to tell Solidity where the function can be called, you know, inside the smart contract, outside the smart contract, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So if we want to be able to change the count, we have to add public here. And likewise, we have to add public here. All right. Perfect. So now what I want to do is set a default value for this count, right? So I can do this with something called a constructor function. All right, so the constructor function is the function that gets run whenever this uh, smart contract is initialized for the first time or when the smart contract is created. That's the same thing, okay? Whenever it's initialized, it's created, it's deployed, it's put on the blockchain. Remember, smart contracts are code that live on the blockchain, and anytime we deploy them, we're actually updating the blockchain state and putting the code on there so that it can get run on the Ethereum virtual machine. Okay. So uh, I can create the constructor function like this. This is the function that's going to get run whenever it's deployed. Just call it a constructor. Okay, we don't use a function name or anything like that. We just use constructor. And we uh, create the function like that. And then we also set the visibility to public, just like the other functions. And now we can set the value of this count like this. Uh, we can say, sorry, count equals zero. All right, and that's gonna set the default value for this count whenever we deploy it to the blockchain. Now, I wanna show you one more refactoring. Um, that shows you you know how to create a constructor function how to do stuff inside of it but while we're here uh, i want to refactor all right this is a little long-winded uh, but it does show you how the constructor function works so i'm going to set the default value of the count right here boom we can do it in line uh, without having to do it inside the constructor function both of these are fine and I wanted to show you how the constructor function worked, but this is a simpler way to be explicit about how you're setting the count. And you could go ahead and change it to anything you wanted to. It could be 10, it could be one, it could be, you know, a thousand. We're gonna leave it to zero for now, okay. So uh, let's go ahead and run this smart contract and test it out. I'm gonna deploy it to um, uh, the blockchain that's connected to this Remix browser IDE already, okay. So I'll go to this Solidity icon here, and I'm gonna choose the uh, version of Solidity that I want. So uh, I chose 0 0.5.1. I'm gonna say 0 0.5.1 right here, okay. This is going to match the uh, version that we said in the file. And Solidity is the language, EVM, compiler default. This is just the version of the Ethereum virtual machine. We don't need to change this, all right. So we'll compile it and see what happens. All right, no warnings, that's great. If you see some warnings down here, um, it should have uh, either some error messages or some warning messages. Just read those and fix your smart contract code uh, to, to fit whatever this says. Now I'm going to, uh, let's see, actually deploy this. So I'm gonna deploy it to the blockchain that comes with this IDE, all right? So what you can do is click this icon right here, this uh, deploy and run transactions. This is just an Ethereum logo. And it's gonna give you several different environments. So you can use the JavaScript uh, virtual machine. Basically what that is, is it gives you a JavaScript-based blockchain that runs in your web browser. And that way you don't have to install anything, you don't have to connect to a test network uh, on Ethereum. You can just do it right here, okay. So uh, I'm gonna use that, and it also has five different accounts with Ether, right, already. So you don't have to like request Ethereum from a faucet or anything like that. You can just use all these accounts that have funds in them. And though this is not worth anything on the real Ethereum network, sorry. <laughs> so let's go ahead and deploy it. I'm gonna uh, click counter, click deploy. And there we go, the smart contract was deployed to the blockchain. So we can see the functions that we created are exposed down here. Um, so I can uh, increment. Just like this, all right? <laughs> well, actually, tell you what, I just realized that I forgot one essential uh, component. We forgot to uh, create a way to read the count, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm just gonna create a function that says get count. Function, uh, get count. And this function is gonna read the count back. Say view uh, public, and so view here is 
um, telling Solidity that it's just going to return a value. So view, public, and then I'm going to say return count. All right. And also I need to specify the return value. I say return uh, uint. Oops, sorry. Had a little problem there. All right, so <laughs> my bad, guys. I forgot to add this. So now we have a function that says get count. All right, and I'm also going to show you that we can use the get count like this, or we can also declare the state variable public like this. You went public count equals zero. Solidity will expose a, a public function just like this that's going to be called count. So we'll see two functions, two ways to do it. Get count, you can write it out long ways like this, or you can do this shortcut where you can just read the count uh, from the smart contract with a shortcut like this. All right, so let's go back to the compile, make sure it compiles correctly. All right, no problems. Go back to deploy. I'm gonna click the trash can on this because I don't want to use that smart contract anymore. I'm gonna keep this JavaScript virtual machine instance, click deploy. All right, now we see all the functions that we want. Increment, decrement, count, get count. All right, so increment, we'll go ahead and increment it, and we'll get the count. Boom, it's one. <laughs> and also, we can, you know, call the count function that was created by default like this. Count, boom, also one. So we'll increment it again. Count's two, get count is two. Increment it one more time. Count, yep, all right, it works. Now let's try to decrease it with decrement. All right, decrement. All right, decrement three, decrement, boom, all the way down to zero. Perfect. All right, so both these functions work. Awesome. So congratulations, you just written your first Ethereum smart contract with a Solidity programming language in your browser. All right, so as I promised earlier in the video, I would show you how to do this with a different blockchain. So what you can do is use Ganache. Um, if you've seen any of my other tutorials or you're uh, maybe have tried Ethereum development before, you have seen Ganache. So Ganache is a personal blockchain that runs on your computer, you know, on your desktop. It's got a nice graphic user, inter excuse me, graphical user interface. Um, you don't have to run from the command line or anything like that. I'll pull up on my screen here. So Ganache is uh, a blockchain, a lot like the one that runs in your browser, and it has a whole bunch of free accounts in here uh, that have Ether and things like that. So we can actually connect to the Ganache blockchain like this. Uh, let's just do, uh, let's see here, let's do a Web3 provider and say, yes, the local host port 7545. Okay. And then we'll deploy the smart contract just like this. And there we go. Boom. We can do increment. Get count. Increment. Get count. Boom. There we go. We can see all the accounts here, just like that. So that's how you uh, connect to your Ganache personal blockchain. Now, you can also do this with uh, an injected Web3 provider that would allow you to connect with MetaMask. All right. So, MetaMask is the Ethereum wallet that uh, you know runs in your Chrome browser right here. And this would allow you to connect to different networks. So you could connect to this with the Kovan test network. You could do the main Ethereum network. Um, let's see here. Let's try switching networks. Sorry, I had a little hiccup in my browser here. So you could deploy to different networks like the uh, main Ethereum network. All right, let's go here. Let's do injected provider. All right, account, open uh, MetaMask. Sorry, I had to open it and set my password. So you could use any uh, you know network you wanted to. You could deploy the smart contract to the main Ethereum network just like this. You could do a test network like Kovan, right? And that's a way that you could uh, you know access some other network to put the smart contract on. All right. So I hope you all like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And if you want to learn more about how to build blockchain technology, you know, if you're serious about becoming a blockchain developer, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.